And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you on this lovely Tuesday morning. We got a lot to talk about as Bitcoin puts in a little bit of a bounce on the four hour and the hourly time frame. We'll go over the hourly ranges. Let's check in on why the market is bouncing right now. And the first thing I did want to bring up that we said was coming today, building permits, high economic impact event came in lower than expected, bearish for the dollar, and the dollar ripped to the downside just a bit here. I'm pulling up the Dixie right now. And on the day, we did talk about this yesterday, uh, trend line coming in right here. If we can defeat this trend line, going to get the breakout up there. <clears throat> I'm looking for another couple drives of hidden bullish divergence, which is price needs to make a lower low and a lower low. Usually the three drive variety, uh, which will give us a shot to the green 55. Um, so I think there's a chance Bitcoin does pull this one out and, you know, pulls back to the upside target, uh, which is the top side of the Gaussian channel, uh, which has moved down slightly. Um, just throwing this indicator on here, Gaussian channel on the weekly time frame, and it is now coming in at 31,505. And um, the chances are, if it breaks it, if it breaks it, it's going to go for a bit more. Um, right now, I think the daily rally has a chance, um, but we do need to get above this box, this green box of peace and prosperity or death and despair. And what am I talking about here? This is right where the 0.5 and the 618 line up. So a bit of a bear trap yesterday on my end um, and still going to play out the bearish divergence if we cannot defeat this level on a daily time frame. We want to see a closure basically above this pivot right here, this last high today. We got another three hours and 30 minutes left on this candle closure. If we can close above there, going to look for good for some continuation. The four hour did already defeat the 618. So I wouldn't be surprised to see one more little push up there, but you're going to have bearish divergence coming all the way back from this point one, two, and this would be the third drive if this confirms as a local high and the RSI does not get back into the bullish control zone. It will have a chance to do it here coming in at the end of today. Uh, what else pulled the market to the upside? Um, where is my new... Where's my new chart? The liquidity, there it is. So I uh, pulled in a new chart here today, People's Bank of China liquidity injection. As you can see, we, get, we did get a little bit of an injection here. Um, also noted on Reuters Magazine here, China Central Bank boosts liquidity support with rollover of medium term loans. So what did they do? They took 170 billion yuan. I wonder if it's the central bank yuan or the uh, CBD yuan or whatever you want to call it. Uh, roughly $25 billion worth of one-year medium-term lending facility loans to some financial institutions unchanged at 2.75%. So unlike the Fed who just hiked rates, right, and crushed a lot of the smaller banks and more bank failures to come, says Warren Buffett, but they kept the rate unchanged. So uh, China is, you know, having a bit of a boost. And we talked about it early this week or even last week. Hey, is China going to end up, you know, injecting some liquidity to save the market? So that in combination with building permits, a combination with the dollar coming down, did get a bit of a little bear trap right here. Um, and I, you know, <clears throat> titled the video yesterday, Bitcoin forming a top. Um, here's what I would say is now that we are back in the four hour time frame, and uh, this is still the four hour ranges. Uh, we've identified this area, which is now going to be support. Uh, this is resistance. If we can get a four hour closure back above 30,850, I would expect the top side of the target to get hit. And let's see if that lines up with our FIB tool. So maybe a little bit higher, but I'm going to leave that there for now. Um, and 
mediate that with a four-hour closure above there. What else did I want to bring to our attention? Uh, well, let's check in on Ethereum. So just taking this level by level, if we start to close back below here, I do think uh, the threat of a downside move. This 28, 28, 8, 28, 6 level uh, is going to be critical, I think, if Bitcoin wants to remain bullish and play out the upside target. Um, if that area gets taken out, the next area down is 26.8, and I don't think it stops there over time. <clears throat> so like we were saying, it is April 18th, two days away from 420, Elon Musk's favorite holiday. And I remind you, there's a bit of a bull rally on doggy coin. I'll check that one out in a minute. But um, it's one of those buy the rumor, sell the news type of events. So these would be my ranges that I'm looking at here. And um, essentially, any kind of a breakout above or below there is going to get the next kind of major move. Let's see if we have any bias busters for um, our regular charts here. And four hour momentum is to the upside right now. Volatility is expanding. It looks like continuation to me. Actually, volatility is beginning to decline here. So not the best look um, for more of a rally, but I've seen odder things happen than that. So this could flip back. We want to see this flip back around into expansion. The hourly is now coming down and perfect silver cross there to the upside. Um, Probably going to get, probably, it needs to get back in the bullish control zone if we are going to make an another, another attempt to the upside. Essentially, what I'd want to see is these cross back up above 30,300. I do think that is going to be an important pivot on the general market. Uh, 30,500 for the 12 hour to cross back up. And for the daily to cross up, we need, oh, yeah, we need a closure above 30,000. 700. So again, where does it all start? It'll start with the four hour. The four hour needs to clear uh, essentially above the 30,300 pivot. We already got that. And that came from a target we did on the live stream last night, which was right in here. Um, actually, I'm going to draw it out with the fib tool here. But we did say, hey, look, needs to get above this region again. Reclaim that 618. We did. So perfect retest of the 0.5. As long as we don't start closing back below the 382 or more importantly, this level at 297, you could expect the rally to at least continue on up here. And that could bleed into the higher term time frames as this is right at 30,650 on the 786 FIB. Um, what else could potentially give us a bias bust here? Um, the five day will not close for another two days. The four day is going to close today and momentum remains to the upside as long as we're above 30,000 bucks. So looking good so far, so good there. Um, and what about the three day, three day volatility is now coming down and that's not the best sign. Three days is going to close here and we'll cross down below 29,692. So uh, that's very, very close to our pivot on the four hour coming in right there. So I'd say the four hour is going to be the uh, time frame to rule them all here in the short term. Um, other than that, um, answer that million dollar question, $32,000 Bitcoin or 25,000 first. I've been saying all along 32 is more likely, but we can lower that down to 31.5, uh, which is the top side of the Gaussian channel. Um, that's it for Bitcoin. Now, Ethereum, this one is looking more bullish than Bitcoin and uh, is putting on these higher lows here. We've got a slew of higher highs and higher lows. And I would suspect as long as we hold this uptrend, this is the four hour range that I'm looking at right now. And any kind of a break of this range likely gets the next big move, a four hour back above 2134 or a four hour below 2059. Uh, momentum is still to the upside as long as we are above 2073 on the four hour. What does the hourly say? Hourly says down. 
will cross up back above 2100. Looks like we are putting in a bit of a bounce with hidden bullish divergence, I'm willing to bet. Coming back from this pivot, yeah, several drives, and I'd be looking at a shot to the top side of the range on the hourly with any kind of a closure back above 20,089 should be get continuation to the upside of the range, top side of the range, or even better with multiple drives. Let's see how many clear stop and reverses. We got one, two, three, call it this three, this would be four. And I would suspect uh, the 1618 fib to get hit, which is all the way up here at 2146. So maybe another grab for some liquidity up there, one more higher low, and then off to the races as the top side of the Gaussian channel for Mr. Ethereum is quite a bit higher from quite a bit higher than it is for Bitcoin. Uh, Gaussian channel top side is at 23.28 now. So it came down slightly. And we are still looking at this daily uh, inverted head and shoulders piece to play out. And I would pretty much uh, bring the pivot up to uh, this level right here as long as we're closing dailies, well, above the left shoulders, the technical area, that's 1700. Um, but I would say it's almost like double shoulder head and double shoulder. So close enough is close enough for me. And what I don't want to see is momentum cross down. It will blow today, uh, below 2121 and come back down below the critical zone, especially below this last low. That would not look good for Ethereum, but um, I'm goosing the odds in the favor of the bulls. The Chinese have saved us with liquidity. Wednesday is pretty much a nothing day. And then we've got more economic data coming out on Thursday. What am I talking about? Jobless claims. I'm talking about uh, existing home sales. And those are the big ones coming out on Thursday at 530 Pacific time. So keep your eyes out for that. And the dollar, as we've said, has the chance to, and all I want to see is a tick below yesterday's low and uh, very likely plays out another couple of drives of hidden bullish divergence. What does that look like? Well, you'd want a lower low, lower high, lower low, and then perhaps that would be your three drives. And we want to see uh, higher lows on the RSI so a bit more of a downtrend on the dollar would be would be frankly nice, but this would have to get pretty tight here for that to continue uh, to print that hidden bullish divergence um, and the RSI. So lower lows than this low, one, two, three, and we get a shot up to the green 55 that would look good for the dollar to bounce. So as for now, we're out of the woods here and uh, that economic data is favoring the bulls. Um, and I wouldn't mind, again, if the Chinese want to dump some more liquidity in the market. You know, I think uh, they had some massive liquidity pumps and Bloomberg had an article today saying that they are winding down their uh, liquidity bursts because, well, their economy is recovering quite nicely. So what else is the narrative? Well, uh, let's check in on some of these altcoins, starting it off with Mr. Doggy. Um, and I do believe that was our upside target from yesterday. Um, pretty much hit there, but let's see where the 618 FIB is on the daily. Yeah, that was our target. Looking for a little bit of sell pressure in that area if we do reclaim this area. Um, putting back on my regular chart here. I'll leave it on this one. Problem is we got declining volatility on the daily time frame. We want this to flip back up for this move to get extended. And who knows what Elon Musk is going to do on 420? Who knows if he's going to change the logo back to uh, the doggy and, uh, you know, make everybody more bullish on the doggy coin. But I do think, as I've been saying all year long, Doggy coin now has a dog in the fight. That's Elon Musk. He could make that the new payment thing for Twitter or just the hopes that it could happen in the future is enough to get people bullish on this asset. 
Additionally, looking at this massive consolidation, uh, we came with the 0.5. I would say a fair target for a pump tomorrow into the next day would be back to that 618. I'd look for some selling pressure tomorrow. Again, it is by the rumor, sell the news. And it's not 420 tomorrow. It's on Thursday, apparently. Um, so two days from today. Today's the 18th. It's about 3, 1.30. Is it 1.30? I got to go to lunch. And this is my second video recording today. I've done a lot of videos today. For some reason, my recording software didn't work on the first pass. So we're getting it done this time. Um, what else do we want to talk about? Altcoin rally and when does it happen? Well, we wanted to see Bitcoin dominance break down below this level. Um, most people are saying, hey, look, the, the breakdown is happening. We got a, well, on the daily, we do not have a, we have a lower low. So we're looking for a lower high trend reversal and then a lower low. That'll be the promising effect of trend reversal on the daily time frame for Bitcoin dominance. So you want to see something like this. We don't want to see it coming back up. If you want a Bitcoin or sorry, an altcoin rally. What else did we talk about? Not only Bitcoin dominance, uh, Tether. We said we don't want to close back above this major trend line coming in from right here. Um, we want to see a closure back below 640 and that very likely to get some continuation to the upside for the major altcoins. Um, let's see, had a nice little trade setup on Fetcoin yesterday uh, that did hit in our Discord. To be fair, probably would have got stopped out, but um, was target was hit. Uh, definitely hit. From what I could see. Um, Let's see. So ETH Bitcoin chart. Also, we wanted to see the higher high and the higher low. It looks like we are going to get a confirmed uh, high here. And as ETH Bitcoin goes down, well, then you'd suspect maybe Bitcoin takes the reins. And it is almost going to pump with a fully bullish, not a fully bullish, a uh, bullish engulfing candle. We got to close anywhere above this wick. I would expect immediate continuation today if something like that did happen. Um, a bullish engulfing candle with volume. And it looks like we're going to have a chance to do it. Let's see if the hourly says we're going to cross up here in the next 19 minutes above 3,300 on declining volatility. That's the only thing I don't like off of this read. 15 minutes says uh, volatility is, yeah, we're heading to the top side of the range at 34 and maybe back to the bullish control zone. That would look good. 15 minute will remain to the upside as long as we're above 31.86. So um, that's Bitcoin there. Uh, again, altcoin rally. We want tether dominance to come down quite a bit more. We want Bitcoin dominance to come down quite a bit more. And we want Bitcoin to trade sideways. Um, so maybe Bitcoin ranges up here for a few more days and gives some of these altcoins a chance to rally. Um, but where are the potential targets for Doggycoin? Again, uh, first target is the 618, which we've already hit, um, which technically we've already hit. So we hit the if if we're using a lower term time frame analysis, what I mean by already hit, well, we already broke above it on the daily time frame. If we're using this high to low on a uh, candle body basis, right at the 786 and heading up to our target, um, bearish divergence, no. Um, maybe slightly from this pivot right here. Yeah, if we cannot defeat this region on Mr. Uh, Mr. Doggy Coin, then there's gonna be a lot of bearish divergence. And that means likely party back down to the downside. Again, buy the rumor, sell the news. If you wanted to put some risk on, this isn't financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, but there is some by the rumor, sell the news type of event that typically surrounds Mr. Doggy Coin around 420. Fed coin already coming down on the daily um, after a nice little rally the past couple of days. Render extending its rally. We said likely to get one more push higher, but triple top. 
looking to buy in this zone um, if you are bullish on render. Um, Stacks did get a little bounce off of this green 55 as we suspected. However, um, momentum is to the downside, will not cross up until we get above 88 cents. That is the point to where I would say, okay, um, rally back on and likely get some continuation back to the upside. We want to see momentum flip back to the upside. Right now, things are looking uh, fairly bearish on this asset. Um, sorry, fairly bullish. Low volatility expansion. All we got to do is uh, see that this is two drives of hidden bullish divergence. Actually, it'll be three drives coming all the way back from this pivot right here. You'd have one, two, three. And how would we confirm this again? Um, any kind of a daily back above this pivot minimum target is going to be the 618 coming up here. And then if we get really above there, um, so I'm going to draw a nice little box of peace and prosperity and death and despair. It's going to be right between the 0.5 and the 618, which is coming in actually right here. So um, above this box, bullish, below it, um, below it, bearish. Um, but for me, if you wanted to front run that signal, I'd be looking at this level right here at uh, 8862. All right, <clears throat> Aptos. Got the silver cross. Got some bearish divergence coming all the way back from this pivot right here, multiple drives. Uh, it really depends on if we can close above this wick, then continuation of the upside back below here to confirmed uh, lower high in price, but higher high in RSI. I would expect to move back to the bottom side of the range minimum and then a second target down um, if we close below there of this guy right here. And that's where I'd look for, you know, perhaps some support to come in on Aptos. If this, again, mediates with a closure back below. Really, that'd be good enough to do it for me at 12.11. Okay, that's it for Aptos. Matic is going to have a chance to do something we've been looking for. It was confirmed on the weekly time frame. We've got hidden. Uh, no. What were we looking for? No. Nope, I'm, I'm not seeing it. What, what was I looking for? Maybe on the daily time frame. Yeah. That's it. So on the daily, you've got a slew of lower lows in RSI, higher lows in uh, price. Slew of them, one, two, three. And I am looking for this one. <clears throat> Again, uh, I think the target on this one's about 133. And that's got to be the 618. Actually, let's draw it a little more finer here. So target is there. Stop loss is here. Again, not financial advice, not a financial advisor. We'll see how this one plays out. I am going to post this one in the Discord, and I'm going to do it with the opposite uh, tool right here. And this is our long position. So here would be... the target, the entry, all good to go. And, and I'm going to punch that in right now. Okay, that's done there. 
And uh, going down the list here, DYDX heading up to our target of 329. Very nice. GMX is blasting off to the moon. We've been identifying this one as a strong decentralized coin. Gala uh, did hit our target. I said if this thing broke the trend of the upside here, we get a retest and then boom to the purple 200. Probably going to run into sell pressure there. I'd be looking for one more test down and perhaps a buy along this green 55 somewhere along there. Um, if you're looking for this one to go higher, AGIX pulling back. Very similar looking to stacks right now. Needs to get back above 46 cents. Um, but you probably do have some hidden bullish divergence on this one. Yes, you do. This one does look bullish. And I think we're looking for a target move up back to 56 cents. As long as we don't close below here. Um, so another pretty simple one right there. And I think a lot of this is going to have to do with the economic data that comes out on Thursday. And if Bitcoin can start to reclaim some of those major areas, what is CFX doing here? Is CFX touching its trend line? No. Nope. I think this one is, you know, closer, closer to pulling back than not. Um, with that closure yesterday on the daily and volatility beginning to increase. Um, we've been targeting a move down to that green 55 for some time and likely does play out a bounce there. Mana is way ahead of the game, a little bit late to be getting in that one. However, it does look like continuation um, after this slight pullback. Uh, SVB coin, I'm not going to get into that one. CRO, another very popular one, almost going to have a bullish engulfing. And if we do close anywhere above here, I do suspect that the rally really starts to get going. And first target is going to be that 618 right at this trend line. Yeah, that's 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 the uh, that is the major trend line for CRO. And if that does break. Well, you're going to get that move up to the purple 200, just like we saw in some other coins. All right, guys, that's it out of me today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give us a like and subscribe. Post a comment below 32,000 or 35,000 first. Sorry, 32 or 25 first. We want to know your opinion. Thanks and have a blessed and highly favored day. Take care.